Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Listen, first of all, let me apologize to everyone out there who's going to be really hungry. I hope you can get your hands on some uh, barbecue. While we're sorry, doing this. not sorry. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, there's gonna barbecue. be yeah, there's gonna be lots of uh, barbecue going on. So let's start. Let's uh, let's start with Big Mo since you know you're the special guest here tonight. Okay. Uh, the, every all these guys are awesome, but you know you're the first time here on the show. Do you want to tell the folks about yourself a little bit, Mo? How you got sure. into the whole barbecue world, your background, etc. Sure. Uh, for me, you know, I come from uh, Des Moines, Iowa. That's where I'm born and raised, corn fed, mm-hmm. east side Des Moines, Iowa. Mm-hmm. And uh, my uh, grandmother and grandfather, um, they had 17 children. Wow. And, and my grandmother and grandfather from southern Missouri. So they kind of moved up to Iowa, Planet Roots. And uh, so we are a tight-knit squad. You know, uh, my grandmother's passed, and I have a couple, uh, a couple uncles and a couple aunts passed. Uh, aunts passed, but we're a tight squad, and we always barbecued or grilled out on, especially like on Sundays after church, uh, holidays. You know, we were always at somebody's house getting down, and so that's how I got introduced into like grilling and barbecue. Just standing there, you know, nine years old, watching uncles and stuff cooking up on a 55 gallon drum cut in half on expanded metal with some uh, kings for charcoal and cooking pork steaks up or cooking some ribs up, some chicken up. So that's how I got, uh, I, I just love the smell of cooking. Uh, I love the smell of barbecuing and I love managing a fire. Um, there was something that uh, when I became like a 10, 11, 12, my mom, my mom had a 55 gallon drum in the backyard and uh, you know, I would go out and I would cook and, uh, and I just love it. And then, you know, um, Grew up, went in the Navy, uh, came out of the Navy in 93, and one of the first things I bought was a little smoker. Went to Walmart, got me a little Brinkman, and got back at it. And um, um, this is before, like, all the barbecue shows that were actually on. I mean, there were some shows, like, on Food Network, but basically, they were, like, the real barbecue shows. And uh, I was just hooked, man. I mean, I started seeing these shows with Tuffy and Johnny Trigg and all those guys, and and I said to myself, man, I can do this, man. You know, I, I love to go to a barbecue cook-off just to see what it's all about. And I, 2006, Des Moines, Iowa, it's called the Pork Expo. Uh, it's a huge global event that happens every year, here, pork industry. But then they used to have a contest that was tied into it called, um, it was separate, but it was during the same time on the same grounds, at the fairgrounds, called Pork Barber Colossus. It's no longer, uh, it went away after the swine flu uh, back in the day. And so... Um, but it was just, um, I remember pulling in um, with my rig, and I up to that point, I'd never been to a, a like a real cook-off. You know, it was just my backyard cooking against my neighbors, and not really against my neighbors, but just cooking and, and sharing barbecue with my neighbors and stuff like that, and they cook. And But when I went to that cook-off and I seen all these different rigs and all the smoke in the air and the smells and stuff, I knew this is where I needed to be, and this was 2006. And uh, for, me, uh, for me, it was just... Um, I was hooked. Yeah. And I'm a one man team and I started doing my cook offs. I did uh twenty that, that year by myself, one man team. Wow. And wow. I've done a lot of work probably, too. Yeah, three hundred and eighty cook offs since then, you know. And I've wow. I've been blessed to be able to go internationally multiple times, uh, all over the world. And now I'm doing stuff with the military, uh, where I'm going over to Armed Forces Entertainment. I just came back uh before this COVID stuff, I was over in uh, Diego Garcia. Uh, Singapore, uh, cooking for the Navy, and, and uh, I'm actually going back in June 28th, as long as this COVID thing can get squashed down. I'm going back over there, Singapore, South Korea, Alaska, all military bases, and cooking. They're shipping my smoker over to Japan in August, oh, uh, October, excuse me, to go cook for the big Navy base there in Yakuska. So it's amazing how I served my country, love the Navy, love the military. Uh, to come full circle and to be able to do, you know, I worked, I got out of the Navy, I worked at the water treatment plant in Des Moines here for 24 years along doing my barbecue. And in 2017, I had the, I got approached by the Academy Sports. And if anybody knows about Academy Sports, they're a huge sporting good chain down south. And they're all over the south. Uh, and uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, man, we'd like to get your products in the stores. And after that, you know, when I looked at those numbers, I was like, okay, cool. So I was able to walk away from the water plant that I did 24 years at. 
and just be able to do me. And uh, it's been a blessing. Um, that's all I can say. I wake up and uh, I just promote my, my my products, my rubs, and and I'm able to take care of my family. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a blessing. But I love barbecue. I love the family of barbecue. Um, and uh, you know, I always had growing up, we'd go uh, shotgun, you know, deer and pheasants and stuff like that, you know. And my uncles, all my uncles were hunters, and and the majority of them. And uh, to be able to hook up with brown ales, uh, do a couple things for them. And uh, it's amazing how tight knit, just like tight knit the barbecue world is, the gun world is the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same way. Yep. When they find out you, you're, you're legit and you're for real, for real, you know, you got you got a friend, man. You really do. And uh, and uh, I'm I'm just a hobby, you know, guy who likes guns. I, I love it. I love getting out. I love the, I'm getting into like long range, even though uh, I say I'm just a beginner. Um, a good friend of mine, Adam LaRoche, he does a lot of stuff for the military. He's a retired major league baseball player from Fort Scott, Kansas. And I go down there, we do stuff for the military, bring special forces guys in and just to hang out for the weekend. And, and I learned so much about shooting with those guys. Yeah. Um, he's got sniper guys coming in, uh, instructors. And just like this last time, you know, I had my first time I went down there, I had my six fight Creedmoor. I cooked barbecue for all the squad. They had still team six come like well i shouldn't be saying that right now they had seal team come in <laughs> and fly they actually drop in do some training there were you, yeah were you shooting this stuff <laughs> that's right yeah fort scott munition yeah. guys you know? yeah, yeah. i went to college in fort scott so oh you I did that. oh actually, oh yeah i went to do i went to the juco there before i went to the navy oh that's cool and, uh, and so it's just like uh i got to get into what these great 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 guys you know and and being that i'm prior service military it's just it's just man it was a awesome so i was just down there here late late fall and we cooked some barbecue and we had like a bunch of army a special forces guy come come in and that instructor took me out and adam roach has got a big mile he's got a big platform on one of his properties it's got you know 300 500 700 800 thousand yard mile range oh, and basically he, everyone's he, dream <laughs> two days, man, taught me so much about my 338 mm-hmm. and it is such a feeling when you take for the first time ever taking a gun i had a ruger one of those new Rigors that back up a couple of years ago, that Ruger that first came out, the Six Fire Creedmoor. I had that, I bought mm-hmm. that out the box gun. And I remember taking me out there, and these guys, I probably fifth shot in, hit the target a thousand mm-hmm. yards. Mm-hmm. And it was just amazing. Yeah. And I just was down there with my 338. I got a custom built 338 and took it down there, man. And it's just, to me, it's just awesome to be able to take a round like that and be able to shoot long range. And have someone spotting for you and telling you the adjustment, knowing what they're doing, telling you the adjustments to make, and then you making the adjustments and then hitting that target. Yep. To me, yep. it gives me goosebumps, and I, I I can't wait to go back down there and shoot long range, man. And and now I've got a nice little collection of guns, and I because I just like them, I, I just love them. I love the, the the quality, I love the diversity of them, I love the history of them, and uh, so I'm a big fan. So awesome. barbecue guns, cigars, bourbon. Yeah. That's Living great. the life, man. You, there's so many. There's some good circles in there. <laughs> Barbecues, right, guns, cigars, too. You're you're all in it, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's it's funny how the whole world here connects. Like you uh, oh, you no. grew up in Iowa. You connect to the Brownells guys. Uh, you've done stuff in um in in Kansas. I uh, the actually the Fort Scott guys sponsor my YouTube channel for ammo. Those guys are yeah, actually they're, they're pretty generous. They got great ammo. Yeah, they're pretty generous. They they really do take care of us over here. Um, th- th- this is so cool, man. I could tell like the passion. Um, let's. Wh- what do you guys think about this? Who wants to jump in there? Because I know Mo was worried that we wouldn't be able to uh, talk or have anything to talk about. <laughs> yeah. right, well, I, I absolutely. My favorite type of shooting in the world uh-huh. is to be laying on my belly with a target at least five hundred yards away, but the farther away the better. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And the two things. Number one, I. Just yesterday, I put on Instagram a, a video of my uh, 12-year-old mm-hmm. hitting a 500-yard target with a 6.5 Creedmoor. Wow. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And the way I try to explain it to folks who do not shoot long range is this in, in this life, this is the closest we get to be to Harry Potter. Okay? <laughs> we do good. something uh, here, sure. and then way the heck down there, mm-hmm. something really cool happens, and you cause that thing to happen. Yeah. 800, 900,000 yards away. And there's just no other feeling in the world like it. I mean, you go, it, it's therapy. I, I, it's therapy. 
It really it's magic. is. Yeah. It's yeah. magic. It's a magic wand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm hard. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm. I'm just looking at listening to videos, man, and, and learning. There's I can't remember the guy's name again, but he uh, he's an ex-military sniper, and uh, he has great videos. And I've been watching him now lately, and learning so much about bullet trajectory, drop, uh, just. Just a wealth of knowledge, and I'm just like a sponge. I'm like a little kid sitting there with my Cheerios on Saturday morning, <laughs> listening to this YouTube, and just watching video after video after video after video. Yeah. And it's a sponge, yeah. and and that's what I, I you know, when we get this COVID thing. Like right now, our gun ranges are long, or you know, we ain't really got no long range here in you know, Iowa. Like you know, the, like the, all the uh, like uh, hundred yarders, they're all closed right now because of this COVID, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm going to be heading down to Texas tomorrow. Um, Actually, Thursday, I'll be heading out of Texas because I'm sold my barbecue pit and I'm picking up and ordering a big thousand gallon tank pit. And uh, but there's a range down there, down in Texas that I go in Keeling, Texas, a friend of mine owns. And I'm going to go down there and take my 338 because I, I bought a 338 Cavari. I've got a custom built bow, bow action. I've always wanted one of these Cavaris and I bought a Cavari here a few months back. And uh, I'm going to take that down and uh, take that. I'm a big fan of 338s, man. Them things ain't no joke. Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. Will, I know you wanted to jump in here. Oh, I was just uh, going to say that, you know, really precision rifles, uh, I, I first got my, I guess, introduction this, this past year uh, mm-hmm. by Dustin Coleman. I don't know if you guys know him with Coltac. Uh, he does suppressor covers, but anyway, I was just a monkey on a gun, and he he uh, put me on his 6 millimeter Creedmoor and uh, guided me in, and I, I darn near hit a, a golf ball at a thousand yards and like, yeah yeah well it, it wasn't me it was good guidance um, but but the, the magic the thrill, magic like yeah magic, and the, like and the capabilities you know of of what these guns can do and and be able to reach out there um, but I wanted to touch on on Mo your your background and kind of what what got you into uh, barbecuing and smoking so. You know, I was really, I was thinking while you were, you know, given your background and your history, and a lot of the reasons that I ended up uh, in the beef business are very similar. Um, one was the social aspect, though. You know, you talk about all these big family get-togethers and everybody's barbecuing and grilling out, and, mm-hmm. you know, you, you like to manage the fire, and, and you know... I think it all really starts with that childhood introduction and like those positive vibes about uh, being around people and enjoying food. You know, it's not just a necessity. It's like the whole um, social aspect with the family and and you're out there and, um, it's what, you know, everybody. It's what life's about, right? That's what, that's the meaning of life. Everybody's having a good, good time and. Global, but it is Americana and you're absolutely correct. You know, sitting on a bonfire and, and, you, and you're cooking some barbecue, and it's done when it's done. You don't force it. You don't rush <laughs> it. Everybody's got their – you got your uncles got the old slits or, or, or the past blue ribbon, and they're sitting there, and they're talking. <laughs> and they're talking and and you I wasn't going to say that, but, you know, it's it's true. Yeah, done. Somebody yeah. always asks me how long it's going to take, and I'm like, well, how many uh, beers is that going to equate to? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the reality, yeah. man. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's fun. Yeah, I think that's what life's about, right? I kind of, I don't know if it happened to you too, Roy, but when 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 Mo said uh, tending the fire, right? that's a very primal thing right there, right? Right, primal thing, uh, harks, harkens back to our ancestry. But there's just yeah. something about because I grew up in Western Arkansas, and all the time we would my extended family, and I had like 14 aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. So Mo I come from a big family too, <laughs> four younger brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, we would have family gathering. There'd be like 50 people there, right? Mm-hmm. And it was the it was all about visiting with your relatives and seeing people you hadn't seen in a while. But food was always the central mm-hmm. element. Mm-hmm. And there's just yeah. something about good food with people that you like and enjoy. I mean, for example, um, I learned this because I got a Cajun sister-in-law, but I, I learned how to do crawfish boils. Mm. So before I moved to Iowa, I was kind of like the crawfish boil man of Western Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah. My wife and I, we have tra- as far as we know, we have transported the only crawfish boil in the history of Union, Michigan, <laughs> to Union, Michigan. We took we <laughs> trucked 50 pounds of crawfish up there. 
to some good friends of ours. But absolutely, the good food with people you truly, thoroughly enjoy, there's nothing else in the world like that. Mm-hmm. You got that right. You yeah. got that right. It's all about that. And that food ties everything together. Mm-hmm. No matter what people got going on in their lives, when you get family and friends together, that food is the final point that ties it all together. And, yeah. and nobody's in a bad mood when they have a mouthful of perfectly smoked brisket. It's <laughs> right. No, nobody's right. in a bad mood. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.